everyone and welcome to the second part of this month's Ascension Energy Update and in this um, part we will be focusing more on the light activation and the transmission uh, which I talked about in the first part but it's a deeper transmission because we are really called to go into the essence of divine love so I'm going to also work with the divine feminine oracle this is a very new I think very fathomable, very potent oracle that brings in the feminine principle. And I've been talking about that this year, this principle within the first uh, ascension integration wave of those beings who are truly called to this path of devotion is really strongly coming into embodiment. Um, and this is something that is naturally occurring. You will see that during the transmission. But I want to show you some of the cards and the aspects which I was receiving during these days since I recorded the Ascension update and it's still very hot here so I might get tongue-tied again I'm very sorry but uh, so much heat and the dry um, humid air and the dry mouth and all of that you know contributes to things like that so we are humans and it is part of that so I want to show you um, the first card I actually received was Ananda Maima okay this is an aspect which as an essence of the divine is called the joy permeated mother and it says I am my own guru I know the self that never changes this talks about the ecstatic presence of joy that no matter what the outside circumstances are and those of you who have the oracle you can read more <laughs> there at the description of these beings who have embodied these aspects or ar archetypes of sacred creation as a divine uh, the kinties of life so this is about really knowing that state and we've gone through so many trials uh, especially i've shared my own stories with you there's a lot of challenging energy but i'm going to share with you what divine love itself has yesterday we did this again long meditation it was very hot but we did it and afterwards i was really called to record this you know in spite of the weather conditions um, but um this is about that what is the higher purpose of all that we're going through at this time you know what is this when we feel we're being pressed by life or external circumstances or conditions or situations in any way what do we actually do you know when we can feel like almost being squeezed and i was actually shown uh, symbology through a plant so when you eliminate the living conditions of a plant by kind of like eliminating the space where it can grow horizontally the plant will start growing vertically and those of you who have or ever had a potted plant you know that plants who have small pots they'll start growing differently more upwards based so this is what i was shown through the family of light choosing such situations which are not always perfect or you know very easy and a flow our first part of our living incarnation is that our growth was meant to spiral onwards very much and very radically very potently upwards so in the elimination of the conditions for optimum uh, flourishing of life in the horizontal aspect of life then the vertical aspect or the spirit of the spirit pillar the pillar of creation within can truly be developed and on my path as a creation pillar I truly know this because this is why I've chosen you know and why I've chosen certain difficult situations and conditions and a very dense uh, living space as well and many times and things like that and sometimes we feel our freedom will be eliminated from the outside like you can't always do this or that because there's other people and there's spaces and you know nowadays there's there, there was even an article recently about how much they're using this um, you know personalized or privatized energy of you know closing the the doors of the beach you know beaches being very much open spaces so the people who live there can actually just go there just a tiny little space for their towels and Know, just their sacred spaces so everyone's sacred spaces is being kind of like uh, sh uh, shortened not shortened kind of like um uh, circumcised circumcised little um, downgraded i've shared my own experiences with this how they were just eliminating 
more and more of that which I call my sacred space I used to have like so plenty and now it's just becoming like one spot where I really feel safe and protected and a few of other ones but they're already crowded and overpopulated so this is happening everywhere that this personal space can feel like now in these times of intense pressures being taken away but during this time we're really growing exponentially because when you have this heart pressing or even what it feels like an oppressing energy we will start to activate aspects that are dormant within our DNA that will develop certain qualities you know that how do we get out of there you know how do we not get out of the situation itself necessarily but how do we get out of the thinking that we are entrapped well there is you know an apparent synthesis or a situation that calls for synthesis because there's an aspect that says you know, you are always eternally free you know in spirit but there's an aspect that has the human embodiment and has a human life that says well but I want to feel this joy and ecstasy all the time um, like this Ananda Mai Mai is teaching here you know the the own guru the knowing the self that never changes no matter what the outside circumstances are which means that we develop that by you know developing the integrity of spirit um, but I'm going to share with you what spirit has shared in, in the recent activations but I want to show you just first before you do that a little some of the other oracles that came out as well the second one that came actually the first one just flew out of the deck more than once okay so the message was really strong there's a very pure energy here like this you know knowing that whatever happens in the outside world your space is sacred because your first space is within so when you cultivate that upward moving spiral of life which is that vertical spirit and knowing okay I'm doing that not to get away from life not to become uh, you know escape like they used to go into monasteries to escape the real life to say I'm, I'm just devoting myself to God now like forgetting that God is in nature, it's in earth, God is all life, it is divine love in itself in its purest form and serving divine love is not let's say necessarily kind of like eliminating yourself from an element or more elements of life because you believe God is a vertical presence like a lot of the Buddhists are going also only vertically and not just the Buddhists but a lot of the religious types of practice they go into one stream of what we call enlightenment but when the enlightenment is truly illumined in its nature it won't go away from life or deny life or any aspect of life but it, it will no longer have containment within it like the presence will be all permeating it won't be captured only in you know I feel good only when I'm in my sacred space this way when I meditate when it's all peaceful it's also about stating your truth even when things are not perfect um, we have been really programmed you know the light has to withdraw itself in all the ways because conditions are not always perfect so recently I'm learning to you know the aspect that we are the living embodiment of our truth but that's one aspect the other is to become an expression of that living embodied truth and recently I was pushed into situations where I really had to verbalize that you know one was the first one was there was people coming here and one of them was smoking all the time and I could just stay silent and observe and do nothing but yet something was like pulling me to go there and you know I knew I can't be like my angry self you know not like angry but kind of like I can be like I can be like that I can be really robust okay you don't know that aspect of me but I can be really crass if I want to be um, you know if I'm really overprotective of something and I said okay just that mode on and I went there and there was a group of people and I said can I just you know have your attention for a moment and it was like you know okay and I said please can you not smoke here I mean deposit you know your smoke cigarette facts here because we we had a fire last year you know that's not the only reason but that's what I was called to do at that time you know and they they might have you know not listen and you know continue to do the same but at least I planted a seed of awareness and I spoke in my truth because that was true we did have a fire last year somewhere up there because of you know summer heat and people just deposit their burning cigarette fags everywhere they want to so the other situation was when I went I climbed the mountaintop okay came there and on that day specifically everyone came there to chit chat and you know mountains is a space when you go there with awareness you climb towards this higher perspective and you stay there and you're really in that withdrawn mode and you want to more receive because there's a very <laughs> strong ethereal presence there okay sorry there's just people making noise there with throwing rocks that's why I just looked <laughs> so um all that day you know everyone was chit-chatting and talking and I just was trying to go and escape but there was a group of people that constantly went everywhere I went 
and there's this huge enormous space there it's wide open and then i start to meditate i left these people you know behind i i really walked fast although you know i had to adjust my speed of walking just to get away from these people but you know they followed after me because they went to climb ahead as well and i was meditating there you know what happened they stopped exactly at the point where i was sitting there was this huge white space but no that's where they stopped right next to me and they started chit-chatting really loud and just stupid things nothing you know random things what's there what's here and i again felt that burst and i again felt i need to become not just living embodiment of my truth but an expression that i'm not just always running away always hiding in my spot and other people can do whatever i want i need to learn to express the feeling side of life okay and then i said can i have your attention for a moment i said can you please not see that i'm meditating here i said look there's all this white space everywhere but you decide to talk and chit chat here when a person is meditating i said that's not really nice you know and they're like oh, oh well you have a lucky day with us ha <laughs> ha you know just making jokes it wasn't really funny i said can you please you know respect you know and they, then they went away of course they still were very loud but at least I was really called to verbalize my truth because a lot of the beings of light they're kind of hiding their truth they're thinking you know there's okay I can do this I can rearrange we're always readjusting um, it's like animals right I, I observe these mountain animals because there's people everywhere and they're constantly needing to escape <laughs> butterfly they're constantly ex like escaping people and going and running and thinking well poor animals right it's they're always the ones because they're more withdrawn they're higher frequency so they have to they're the ones who have to withdraw and so even though you feel you will create your sacred space and it's unlimited you still have a voice you also exist you have the same right of free will as everyone else so if they have the free will to chit chat whatever they want you still can express you can at least express the part that is you what you feel your feelings without holding back so that was that message so the second one of course was mary magdalene i pulled this one this was the second card i pulled it she's the apostle of the apostles sorry it's really windy so the device is shaking i am the bridge between heaven and earth i'm fully human and fully divine this was the second part of the activation which we received so we did this meditation yesterday and the focus of that channel transmission was to release aspects that feel they're somehow attached to you know this what is the old aspect of being a being of light or light worker in this world uh, but in general and we carry a lot of this i was shown we carry a lot of this ancestral ideas you know what it means to be a light worker even okay so we're always still programmed even though we're doing the work of light okay we're doing the work of light but within which framework okay because a lot of light workers are still feeding what we call the aspect of duality so we were actually shown this releasing process which you do by you know creating a bubble of of love and then putting something in that bubble and then actually withdrawing that and it's kind of like you're pulling it um up from whatever is heavy in your heart or whatever it is you're creating that bubble and they're putting that pattern whatever it is in that bubble and then you release it okay that's one aspect but but when we were going into that something within me felt it just didn't feel right you know i said okay you do the invocation this time i said to my mother you do it okay and i'm going to be the one just following it but every time she said the words i said no no something's in and not aligned it's not really adjusting something doesn't feel right anymore and what did you know when we call in the presence of divine love i said but what would divine love do i keep i keep getting that question and i actually this is this bridge of heaven and earth i'm going to get to the message here but i also wanted to share the oracle or the being that we received exactly on the day before we did the meditation it is marguerite poret probably not pronounced correct she's french i think she's the mystic of divine love and i don't know any french <laughs> except you know it's just like uh, l'amour and uh, je t'aime and things like that born of love so she says love is divine and i'm nothing except love so that day we really called in that presence and we work with it so during that transmission it really came through and what came through was that because love simply is everything love is all all around it's all all encompassing it is omnipresent it is everything is born of love even that pattern what you say i need to put that pattern in a bubble i'm releasing it i'm pulling it upwards and i'm sending it somewhere up in source to be transmuted into the light that's usual conviction on when people do the clearing cleansing purging it's 
the most common thing to talk about in terms of purification in the new age is you're always eliminating something. You're eliminating an aspect of yourself. You're pulling it somewhere. You're pulling it into the light, pulling it somewhere, um, working with the light, but work with, with love. The mysticism of love is the next level of that. I'm not saying that the work with light does not lead towards there. And I have also many light activations that assist you in that process of unveiling and coming into a deeper presence of who you truly are as nothing but, like she says, nothing but pure love, nothing except love. So as we were doing that, it didn't feel right anymore because that's almost like, you know, she said the words, love comes, we invite, we invite in this golden presence of, of divine love and she assists or helps with this. And I say, no, love does not help with, because when you say love helps me with this, you feel like you're not a part of that love. You're not that love. So something outside of you comes and helps you or assists you or, you know, it's sort of like a divine intervention. A divine intervention, when truly is a divine intervention, it means it comes through you, your higher presence, your love presence. So in that state, right, love simply comes. It is enough to be in the presence of love that illuminates and overlights your perspective, which is I need to keep, you know, drawing these bubbles up or whatever it is. It's just one form of clearing, you know, or cleansing or purging you can imagine. So we were actually shown that when you invoke the presence of divine love, that is you not coming and assisting you as an outside source, really as your own internal source. And it's all permeating and will simply expand you. And it is enough for us to simply be in awareness of that presence, to be aware of that. To be aware, I am in the presence of love. Love knows what to do without doing, without controlling, without me feeling like I need to do or control something to eliminate a pattern or heal or resolve a pattern. When you work through the mysticism of divine love, it is like the next level to what we do with light. Light informs us so we can build a bridge to a higher aspect of what we know ourselves as, okay? So it's like, you know, the bringers of the dawn or Pleiadians, they say, well, your work was to incarnate as a human, forget that you're actually more than a human, do the work, evolve and remember, oh, I'm more than a human to get in the first place to the step, which tells you I was that already in the first place. But how did I not know? Because you chose to evolve through the human body without that forgetfulness, the evolution would not take place within the kernel or the seed which does not remember, it goes through the dark, it goes through the void. So when you work with the mysticism of, the, of love, there is not just this aspect, you're bringing things into the light, but you're actually in that void. You're in that complete, it's like you're thrown in this deep surrender that you have never felt in your life before. And have you ever had a situation, maybe a tiny situation where you had to trust completely and you did not know, and you didn't exactly, let's say, necessarily have to work with the light. So this is how, working with the mysticism of love is and it feels like so the guidance that came through that transmission was love simply is everything including that pattern and when you remember that when you call and invoke this presence of divine love it just it's not even you need to resolve something or release it because that's still an aspect like you create a bubble right to put something in a safe space or to um, to mark it to know what it is, to name it, to label it. You're like, that is in this bubble. And when it has a borderline, I know what it is, because if it's borderline free, it's completely free. I don't know what it is. It's complete union with everything. So I don't know what to call it or what that is. I can't call it out. So in the presence of love, those borderlines, even if you still feel called to create them in order to know what you're working with or a pattern you're working with, eventually will have to come to a state where you will dissolve. You will dissolve the need to even name that pattern or name that thing you say i'm healing this and that it simply will become enough for you to walk into the presence and the majestic beingness of divine love which is the all permeating source of life the feminine principle this is how the feminine principle of life works we've been going through and towards this the whole year now with the eclipses it's really kind of pushing us there. And now we have all these planetary retrogrades, right? It's Mars and Mercury. These are both kind of considered masculine uh, energy planets. So these masculine energies are now laying dormant. And with the eclipses, we're, we're kind of awakening the more feminine principles. First we had, I think we had the, the Cancer New Moon. Was it the Cancer New Moon? Then we have, uh, we had the first eclipse. The first new moon was like that. Um, then we had the Aquarius and we're going to have the Leo, right? This 
sovereign empowered but we always say well leo is a masculine actually it's more of a feminine it's more of a feminine it's that regal royal presence of the feminine which is already aware of its majesty it doesn't need to do any kind of work that feels it's separate from the majestic and mystic part of it's not a part but just the truth of love um, so these are concepts and yet you need to come into your own self awakening with that i'm only sharing this with you to maybe help trigger that which already is within you and can become liberated and can come into this next octave so the next thing that was shared within this transmission was let's say you use the word okay love comes and it helps me or assists me that doesn't mean you're channeling the wrong way it means you're right now at the level where you still perceive life like this so when you become a divine channel and we've talked about becoming the vessel a few months ago you really trust yourself the words that come through everything is an expression of divinity and that because it's divine in nature does not know right or wrong good or bad like you're making a mistake by using that word when i do activations words come naturally spontaneously and if i feel like the word is coming is not fully aligned i wouldn't say it's a mistake it's like mm, I, I tune into again i go deeper so with love you don't necessarily have this perception of right and wrong good or bad but just going deeper deeper into the presence of love and then re-modulating or re-experiencing what you're bringing forth into that creation you're doing during a transmission and the feminine principle of life is teaching us to master the inner realms because a lot of self-mastery was in this horizontal plane of being was in this world of matter because we've mastered all these situations that feel they're kind of going against us so we can do the vertical bridge so we can rise up like uh, beans right they grow up <laughs> like that story you know with jack and the beans or i don't know what it's called because i'm not an american or english uh natively but um you know that beans grows and it's kind of like the bridge between the earth and the heavens there's some giants in between and some of those stories i think there's a movie as well i used to watch once it's nice um but it's that bridge between the heavenly and the earthly and knowing that what actually builds the bridge it's our intentions our works the inner works that's always the main focus here so when we did that activation okay that the channeling that came forward was first there is no wrong and right when you're doing that channeling transmission love when you come into the presence of love all else dissipates it, it becomes rendered in a way in the presence of love all that is let's say you've been doing and sending these bubbles of patterns up in order to release them and that served you in that and that requirement in your life path at that moment and it was right for you so there's no right and right right and right <laughs> see that's a win-win it's a non-duality it's just right and right there's no right and wrong but there is a concept of duality if we are still experiencing it so it exists but in that space it's just like what is right for you in that moment and when you grow you really grow you continuously grow vertically until that bridge between the heaven and the earth is, is fully when it's fully present and i've talked about this in the first part that bridge which creates a multidimensional fusion you will become more aware more susceptible to what still binds you in this thinking that's not fully creative thinking through multidimensional presence but it's still some somehow linear and it's it's still rooted in duality so you're doing let's say you're doing work of light and beautiful devotions and decrees but there's a part of you that's still filtering them through uh, through the expression of somehow the separation duality so you're sending bubbles up but you believe it serves you it does but at a certain point you will create so much light quotient which i share it is a major part of life force mastery as you create a light quotient that eventually creates a shift internally a dynamics will shift and you will no longer see reality the same way so our basic work is that inner work we do until we reach that threshold of light quotient mastery and, and integration that there's a natural shift and then the outside shifts kind of like they they have to respond to that because that's the way universes are built through that principle that it's all created through that inner intention and creative envisioning process which i've talked to you about numerous times before so the next card is Rita of Cassia again probably not pronouncing it the right way but it's, she's the patroness of impossible causes and she says I'm miraculous my prayers create powerful channels of possibility and this is again this is what you once thought impossible and rendered it like as that as such is now becoming an, another possibility within the infinite but what what is occurring here and I've I've been going through the spirals right of the cycle of myself when i was doing the inner mastery work and building this new template that i share with you then in the videos 
that these things are coming in sequences. They don't all like, ta-da, you know, like illumination happens all at once because we're building that bridge and bridges that step by step, okay? So the next guidance that came forth through that activation was that, you know, because we read the story of that day of Marguerite Porette, right? How she wrote this book and she was told to stop circling the book around. And, you know, eventually she just ended up being burned at the stake, like most of people who are very illumined at that time. But the level of illumination they carried was still placed within a framework of human suffering, okay? If you die for a certain cause or you die for a certain ideology, you die for your faith and your beliefs because your will is so strong and you know what you know and you're faithful to your truth, even if it costs you, you know, your own death, okay? So that was an experience of that ultimate vertical alignment. So she was so over permeating with this law, the mysticism of divine love. She so trusted that, that even when she was put on trial, she was like, she remained in that presence and whatever it was, she just remained, remained, you know, until her last breath probably, okay? But what I was shown in the activation is that because of this martyr martyrdom and this sense of the light or the family of light, like even how it was shared in the family of light book um, from Barbara Mersiniak that the family of light has always experienced trials like this. It was always on the down low. It was playing the martyrs and the saints that ended up poorly or, you know, it was just the game was set up this way. But what I was shown is that this was because the bridge was still not built. The bridge towards what is truly heaven on earth, like Magdalene says, I am the bridge between heaven and earth. I'm fully human and fully divine. And once again, I want to show you this Magdalene, um, visual here is pretty on point it's pretty on target you know i have this red uh, thing I, I do yoga on i call it my tantrica uh, uh, thing like a wrap i think i was given this as a gift like so super many years ago i think it's from bali and um i think something like that someone went and brought it to me there i was still much younger like yeah much 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 younger <laughs> i got old now but um this is so on point, this, this red, this, this earthy. So she wears a red veil, which is that rooted, earthy, sensual experience. So when people in that vertical alignment were so persevering with their truth, with what they were meant to transcribe onto the earth, it was the era of truth telling. Um, and it was a long era, okay? It lasted in this, let's say the last age um, the last 500 years of the Piscean Age was very strong. So there was many works of art of truth trying to come through and being pulled into the, the physical sphere of life and so many of them being denied their existence and circling in the secret circle, circles and you know the, the Illuminati or the ones that are truly holding all that's illuminated. They're doing it like ha harnessing it for themselves and like harboring all that. So they wouldn't reveal that to all the masses but it's all there. Even if the libraries were burned, they never burned everything. They kept their own, as you know, they kept their own um, uh, copies. Yeah, let's call it like that, their own manuals, because they truly were open to, okay, let's study everything. Let's know everything they wanted to know, but let's hide it from the rest of the world, okay? So the game was set so that the vertical and the truth telling and the informative time was really at the forefront so that was more important than to have your life and still keep your life and continue walking on earth okay <laughs> so you you can die for your truth okay you can die for this what we say the sacrifice dying for a higher cause and even what they did with um with the inception of that was placed right in the beginning of the age of pisces which occurred through uh, jesha's cr um, uh, crusade not the crusade sorry well it's all about the cross right um it's about him dying on the cross and then the crusaders and it's all about the cross. It was all about the cross, if you think about it. And what this cross truly means is this duality, right? So the vertical and horizontal, but they're kind of like at, at the cross. They're not in the union. The union is the basic of Pisces formation, okay? When there's spirit and matter, they're kind of like coming together, joining. It's like the, the twin soul connection and the spark of life, truth. So when you go back, and why was this inception? And as you know, many sources say it didn't even happen. It was an inception. It was a holographic imprint that showed us this suffering and dying for this cause. And a lot of these stories um, are brought forth. And although many of them did happen, they were like 
a transcription of what was put there as an inception point like this is you know how it is whether you are living for the truth you're gonna die or you're gonna end up this way so what I was shown at this time through the principle of divine love when we simply align with love and that um, activation was that love love being all of us even the patterns even the game duality all of that all that set up love is borderless it's infinite it's all of these things it's it's simply like imagine a mother loving all and because it's the love of all and for all and all causes dark versus light all causes it has such a strong potency of what we now require to lift to rise ourselves to the level okay so you can say to yourself i'm in divine love i'm in divine love but you're still kind of in a way only vertically in this in this presence of love that's what can happen you're living one-sided experience of source it's not yet heaven on earth it's still a cross you know at a certain point the cross it's like it's this heavy intersection but there can be union there can be like a balance like it is in a basic like pisces like two circles coming together and joining so i feel like this new geometry that needs to be put into the collective now through this transmission of the mysticism of love is the Vesica Pisces being written in this the kernel or the seed we're placing in the beginning of the Aquarian age or this new age we're building so that's why now these divine unions and if you want to know more uh, check out my avatars of a lumen union podcast well basically it's a, a gateway light activation meditation as well uh, but it's a lot of channeling there so that's available on my beloved uh, part section of the webpage, page Serapina Light. And it explains this, this process, what's being written as the code of life into this next passing age. So when we're coming into this mysticism of divine love, this is what happens. So instead of the cross, so out of this cross, we're building this. This is what I'm being shown now. And this means that there is no more like you're either living vertically or horizontally. So the people that are living just there, um, physical lives which means um, they're kind of rendering the truth factor so they can live safely and be just like somewhere there and just have their own life even if it's completely withdrawn from anything higher of spiritual in nature okay and the other part was living so vertically so devoted to the truth that they were even willing to die for it or make self-sacrifices for it so what love showed me now was that love now wants to build through us and we are we are now family of light vessels for this and family of light just represents anyone who has awakened to the presence of love because you have informed yourself enough through what is called the principle of light that sorry that you now know how to um, operate also as a mystic of love this is this higher octave that this whole year the feminine principle has been trying to show us how to live in the mysticism of love and invite in the feminine principle which is you're watering the kernel you're you're constantly nourishing your seed without the constant doubt and because there is doubt you're creating all the other circumstances around you that will somehow make it safe for you or make you survive or because of that dispotency i don't know if that's the right word but it's kind of like we're bringing forth the memory if we don't do that if we don't stay solid and fixed we won't survive because in other ages we also didn't you know as if we're looking at ourselves as a collective soul being as a collective group soul it happens to all of us even if that was not necessarily your life or someone else's life or someone you know but it happens in parallel and it's the lives of all in creations it's creations incarnations right because that's how creation is born and experiences itself so when you consider it like this think that now it is time that this sacred feminine principle is slowly knocking on the door and inviting us and saying look it is safe it is time now to embrace this principle to soften ourselves a lot of us who've been going through this you know this from this heart and you know i remember i used to perceive everything as a spiritual training i used to do all this mountain nearing and walking and running and i i stopped a lot of those activities i don't do it as often you know even, even when i do it my body says mm, not really aligned so much anymore i prefer more the the feminine the softer ways of expression like dancing yoga swimming things like that just walking um, feeling the energies because now it's time to soften that this shell we've been building so we could survive so we could be strong and have the spiritual muscle built this vertical because the outside circumstances have been kind of pushing us to do that it wasn't part of the natural process but i've been shown now is the time to also complete that cycle 
and who's ready to complete it first will be the ones to do it first. It's always the hardest for the first wave, as you know, and that's why you might have challenges and initiations that will take you to that place. So the last thing that came out was when you open up to the state and when you say, how do I know I'm being healed? How do I know I'm doing the right thing? How do I know, you know, I live a certain life, I'm joyful within, there's a part of me that says I am because I'm, I am my own sacred space because I'm doing my inner work, I'm always in this joyful presence. But there's an aspect of you, which we call the divine child, the birth of creation. And on this physical earth plane, it is our bodies and the bodies are most precious vehicles. It is the most precious possession we can have and we will have. And to understand its meaning and value, and we do that through the awakening of the feminine principle and the embodiment of it, we're actually realizing how much more we are than we might've thought that we are which means we open up the gateway of allowing both of these aspects. So there's this higher self that's, <clears throat> when we tune into it, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> we're always blessed. We're always in this ecstasy. So that's why a lot of these saints um, have been having these experiences, right? Like this one. Uh, I think Paramahansa Yogananda met her and she was always like this. And he asked her like, why are you like this all the time? And she said, because I'm always like this I have always been like this I always will be like this you know as knowing her true state her true origin but what is now important is to not just experience that vertically but to bring that in the integrated sense and that's what the family of light is doing is like busting the systems to create a way that the life on earth is also pleasant and joyful not just the inner life the inner plans the inner soul the, the transient uh, the transcendent realms when you connect to that of course when we are in that space we can always be like that okay if i am let's say provoked by an external factor i can just go deeper within and forget that exists but i'm not here just for that matter in this new age we are here to also alter that of how the collective functions because it is somehow destroying the planet as well it's not just self-destructive but it's also destructive towards the planet so now at this time we've built so much of that vertical so now it's time to spread that all that we've had maybe some of you were the incarnations of these you know aspects of course you know we've all as a collective being being so much even if it wasn't on earth we've experienced those archetypes maybe somewhere else maybe on the Pleiades right somewhere else um, life of the origin point in this galactic system is through the Lyra or Vega that a birthing point right through the white hole or white prism of creation held there so you know god knows how many other things and you know plays or playouts we have already experienced but we are here now at this junction point in this transmission of light so what i've asked love to show me what is the matter what is the importance here now and why do we not always feel happy like we feel there's an aspect of us that feels always content and there's an aspect that says, but I don't feel my freedom. I live in this space and my freedom is often taken away. Like in my own life, I can't go on my own balcony because there's smokers everywhere around me and it's always like uh, smoked there. I can't go there, I just can't. And I, I feel frustrated at times. I have a balcony and I can't use it because other people have their sacred space there and they're just sitting there don't doing anything else because these people are so dense. And I can get frustrated about it or I can say, okay, I have my feelings. So that feeling is also a messenger. And what love has shared is love now wants to build this, what we're calling this bridge, heaven and earth, okay? This means first we embody that internally. And we can't do that if we don't give the voice to both. So the higher self says, but you're always a master. You're always in bliss. You're always in ecstasy. Just connect to that part of you. And there's an, an aspect called the physical body, the birth of the, this child that carries or this carrier of this vessel or vice versa. And he says, but I'm experiencing, I'm feeling, and I'm not feeling well if I can't step out and, I don't know, eat my dinner outside on the balcony. If, you know, I, I don't have the conditions to do it or I always have to go somewhere else or always go, go, going outside. Like I can't be in my building most of the time unless it's raining, okay? I'm always outside, I'm like a gypsy person. I take all my things, I'm like gathering them and I just, you know, create my sacred space. I'm camping outside. Because situations are that dense and that intense in a way. But I've been shown like there is a purpose for this when the, the inner, this vertical meets the outer so that we're no longer feeling like a martyr or carrying this experience from previous eras or eons of time within us within our cellular encoding design and once we 
completely, completely voice out all of that. So these aspects that we call the ancestral aspects can get their voice. And this is why when you silence yourself and say, come on, I'm already enlightened. I shouldn't supposed to feel this way or feel like I'm being uh, victimized or threatened or in any way. Like, let's say there's just dense energy and you're so empathic and you don't want to be a part of that energy. This is how my inner child feels all the time. It says, I really respect that people still live like this, but I don't want to be a part of it. And yet somehow I still am for a reason. And love knows this reason. It is so mystical that when we try to find it as a human being, we will often fall, you know, dead end. <laughs> we won't always be happy because we're going to be in search, mentally trying to understand this. What love wants to do is through a very mystical way that we don't always see or can predict how it hap happens or it shall unfold. It's just allowing to give ourselves the voice. When you're in joy, you have your peak moment, then sometimes the inner child doesn't feel or feels restricted in any way, it doesn't feel that good. Voice that out too, and then dance it out, sing it out. Use that word, um, the divine word of expression whatever that is through your body through your language because your language is light language any kind of dance or spoken or sung or written word you do it's, it's a language and it carries a different frequency each time but it tunes you to what's important in the moment so it's important for us to voice that out because love is affirming all of this through us it's not separate so when you say i'm not happy this way you know we always say joy is unconditional yes you can be joyful even if you don't have the things you would kind of prefer in a certain level right i would prefer a true home once and for all in this life i've never had it before like a true space that's just mine and there's no one else's energy in that space which is mine it's my home and the thing is even if that is not so you know that's what we call an aspect that we say it's a human happiness which is different happiness can be very conditional joy is not joy is pure joy is unconditional you're joyful if you have a reason why you're joyful it's it's not joy it's a certain level of contentment or whatever it is but that true divine joy that ecstatic joy is unconditional you might have fleeting moments of it you might feel it more and more as you're growing and mastering your vertical embodiment in the horizontal conditions and states of being and a lot of people who've chosen easy lives they haven't chosen to be that trigger because they're not that ready yet to go that deep and what is the density, what matter can look like, how gross or how crass can it be, how restrictive it can be, okay? So some people said, I don't wanna go that deep, okay. But when you go that deep, it means you're really ready to activate the deepest aspects of your cellular knowing, which comes through the, the DNA record memory that all of your gifts and abilities can become developed. You know, it's like there was a TV show and one character ended up in prison. And when she was in prison, she, she was in training. She did all this, her Kung Fu, I don't know what combat there. And she just trained herself. And that's how she got out. It was turning within. She didn't feel like, okay, she did feel bad. Of course, she has feelings. But she somehow transformed or morphed those feelings into really, you know, powering through that. So that eventually that was her ticket out because of her gifts. <laughs> Her gifts got her to the next level. And even if it's like a physical thing, it's met metaphorical for what's happening now. And with this, when we master and we do that vertical column because we were pushed into doing it, let's say you have a very easy life. You don't always do you know, what is required spiritually of you. You get lazy. A lot of people, a lot of souls get really, 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 really lazy, okay? It's like a uh, condo somewhere in a beach, like a nice resting chair all the time. You know, for me, even when I rest, I'm not resting. Here is always work, always, always work. And sometimes it's frustrating for me, but this is what I've chosen. And this is what actually makes me feel good when there's activity, when there's energy recycling and recreating something all the time. It always needs to move. So the last message was, how this bridge is being built, we don't know. We don't know whether it will happen for us in this lifetime when the outside conditions will fully match us, the inner heaven and earth and the outside experience of that heaven and earth. We don't know. But when we're affirming it that every day we're aligning with it, we're creating it, we're creating it. You go into that essence. The external conditions don't match you. Well, don't go for it. Don't chase something there. Don't chase the experience there. Turn around, go towards your inner gifts, master that creatrix within you. That's how we're doing it. We're not doing it because the outside is somehow, something on the outside will match that. But when the inner activation and integration will be complete, the outside will naturally respond to that. 
or there will be an uplifting or an apprising of a certain light quotient there and that space will call you out or you will call that space out it's a ripple effect it's a mutual reverberation and it's magnetic so one last vision i want to share with you is i had a vision right of, of a bridge connecting to divine beloveds and there's a bridge between them and it was like imagine you for the first time like seeing your ultimate mirror in the side like the other you and you're, you're, you see them across the bridge and all you want to do is want to run towards them that's what i was seeing and when i was trying to oh how do you feel how does that make you feel you know like in the movies and they run towards each other and in my vision they couldn't run they were like Ugh, you know like you want to run but you can't like ah, oh, i can't run towards you and the message came fast it's like this is not that kind of creation when there's a running towards something this is not the feminine principle so they both in the vision just relaxed and what happened was they were magnetically drawn together like they were flowing up in the air and they met somewhere like this in the air so this is what i talk about in the illumin unions that's the kind of metaphorical expression of what an illumin union is you're not like chasing someone's tail or people who are doing the work to get their twin flame to get this something always feeling there's more work for you to do more 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 to release more to purge it's it's not that feminine principle of life so this magnetic this naturally charged energy oh whoop, whoo, and up they went up they went into the air that was this last vision so the last oracle i got actually yesterday that was a synthesis so i got one two three four five five is change mixing a lot of that and it's called dakini and this one says this is the enlightened feminine and you can't believe but at the same time just before this one i pulled a buddha card it was also this meditation it was also a masculine expression of that um, enlightenment so they were like polarized equals and it says my gut instinct is wise beyond reason i trust my intuition to guide me and um, i think i want to read that message from the booklet so i hope you're enjoying the transmission so far um, I'm just sharing with you what I received. It would be too long for me to also do an activation and it, it's just too hot nowadays. So I'm gonna wait. Yeah, the butterflies coming here, getting some cooling off from my little, little, very little shade. It's not a lot of shade here now. Let's see, I have to read through the, um, cause they're not according to um, alphabet. They're kind of referenced differently. Let me see. Dakini, where is she? I really don't know. Aha, uh -huh. page 130, which is 13, which is the sacred goddess, the divine ultimate goddess of life, creatrix number. Um, and I want to share with you that was that feeling like, oh, when you finally get it, not understand it, like trying to get it, but when without trying to get it, it makes sense. It's like your heart feels, yeah, that's it. I don't have to like, um, continue searching further you know, like that book Siddhartha which is about someone who's always searching something and going here and there and there I know Buddha stories very similar and in the end you come back home where the realization is there in the first place I often had these experiences where I went to the mountain I thought it was gonna be an amazing experience I came back home was like why did I go there anyway and the message was I went there in order to get that that I don't always have to go it's not always gonna be even in the mountains it's not always going to be, oh, a lumen, you know, sometimes you go there and there's people chit-chatting everywhere. It's like, what is this? Did I come into a bar? It's like life is not static. It's not like the experience you once have will be recreated in another timeline because you think, oh, what I had there, I can have there again in this now. Not necessarily. So this message says that she comes as a guide, as a protector. And this is also about being that unruly self. Sometimes, like I said, even little crafts um, can be... Um, so she represents the enlightened feminine principle of non-duality that transcends gender. She contains a sharp, quick and uncompromising energy that can feel radical, wild and free. As a space dancer and sky goer, the Dakini has left the rigid boundaries of earth and the laws of gravity. She's about, to, um, she's about the limitlessness of the sky and because of this, all possibilities are open to her. In Tibetan Buddhism, she represents the inner realm as a meditation deity, the outer realm as a tantric yogini, ooh, I do that, <laughs> and the mundane realm as a woman who teaches spiritual truths in each moment of her everyday life. So this is very much, for me, it resonates with the way I live. I do that, I do the meditation, I do these activations, I do tantric yoga and dancing. 
and simple simple everyday life wisdom because life teaches you life teaches you don't forget that this is the truly enlightened being so um, she holds the gold tantric staff staff <laughs> staff as a symbol of the ultimate union she has attained ecstatic bliss and emptiness so um, she can appear as a, like I said a messenger and whatever she does because the ordinary rules of conduct don't apply to her she does like in that unruly way so no one rules her and a taste of freedom is what she wants to give us most of all and this was also those were my main teachings like that free spirit born free spirit born born free so the dakini also means as a meaning maybe resonates with some of you as an additional message if you don't have this oracle but I advise you really really to get this this is the time it's really beautiful she says the task will be accomplished whatever it is you're currently working on a project an answer or a decision she will help see you through to the other side in whatever form you need most as a playful angelic presence as a taskmaster to help you maneuver through what's hard or a messenger with the wisdom that's needed for you to take the next step but with the dakini the answer and the way forward is not with the intellect like i said it's not something we can figure out this is this is the void this is like what <laughs> I'm surrendered and this is where you truly understand the meaning of surrender so she is the embodiment of feminine intuition and reminds you that you have an innate power to know instinctively what's best for you now like I said something maybe was best in the moment before and this situation or conditions feel like you want to recreate that or it feels like similar but it's not necessarily going to be that it always has to be in the now so it means it's not going to be a clear and straight yes or no if you're looking for the answer it is the third option it's the third way the third creation so she reminds us that there's something out beyond yes or no or even right and wrong and this is exactly what the activation said there's something your gut will tell you if you can be expansive enough to hear the answer she is not bound by the usual <clears throat> or by the expected she will allow you to come up with the unthinkable the most imaginative and the most brilliant outcome possible the meditation is which is a question what is my intuition telling me in this moment yes it's beautiful so all these oracles somehow completed their story in my world at least that part was it felt complete and um, the way that love in this timeline in this earthly creation where we are now as avatars in form okay avatars like spirits in our suit in our meat suit what we are doing now we don't always know and we don't have to know but love knows and when you surrender to that that mysticism of love then the next step will always come along and even maybe that next step will make full perfect sense but the ingredients somehow that are required for these changes to transpire that way or be attained a certain way they will come together naturally for us without us needing to reinforce that in a certain way or force even conditions into being so that is what the mysticism of true divine love teaches us and imagine again it's not that running towards each other like almost you would so love to you still have to like hmm recently let me share it this way in the mountains i got this message in my own example that recently i've managed to attain the harmonization of the energies between the, the twin soul right which is the, the vertical matrix and in the horizontal human plane of expression so that the harmonization of each other's energies was complete that doesn't yet mean okay now what happens next you see the mind wants to again jump to conclusions and create an answer again it's that third option it's something like okay i don't know what's the next step okay that was complete okay thank you for the message but you don't know what that means for the requirement of where you are now so this is that level of surrendering which really really goes deep okay it's different than the surrendering where you always have to know what's my next destiny what is happening to me it's what am i creating through the intention and then the mysticism of love guiding you through that so the, the intention that you are building through knowing your creation is always in alignment with that that's the most natural organic pathway and because we're at this time or the era where the vertical translation of of what we know as the ultimate truth and divine love well ultimate truth wants to be let's just say it like this translated through divine love into the harmonization spaces of the reality that is physical and tangible because this is the time this is the time for such a transformation and because we might hold a memory or ancestral record 
keeping that says it's not possible, it wasn't possible. There's still a memory line connected to that. Even let's say you didn't have physical incarnations of that way. You and your body, you're part of all the incarnations that ever led to this body that is now. I've shared this in the Ascension update. And which means it's all within you. So you're connected with all of these lives that were built to create this life, which is you now, that participated in that creation, okay? So this is what we were doing. And not like convincing these lives, oh yeah, 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 it is possible. But creating an energetic template a new soul embodiment that naturally says through my embodiment look i embody the possibility of that not like i believe it is possible but i make it possible because i've done the work and then you put it into the the fields you put it into the record field of the wholeness of the all because the part is not separate from the whole therefore you create this new template and this is what we were meant to do and because we were squeezed in the conditions that weren't always perfect in my life, I've lived in tiny little compartmentalized pots, uh, you know, like apartments all my life. I've hated it. My human self has hated it. Has absolutely hated it. But somehow, you know, I didn't choose like a rich family or, you know, being provided for, or being a noble person in that way, like physically, so that I could get the work done. <laughs> my soul recognized that as the ultimate potential for me to master myself this way that the vertical will be eventually translated into this horizontal timeline. It's, it's as easy as that. And when you know that, a part of you feels at peace because the higher self overlights you and you know, oh. But still the, the human, like the vessel, um, in the vessel, the human experience won't always be this emptiness because we're now walking from this, a lot of you who has been, let's say, incarnations of the high priestesses or priests and all these expressions of the vessel, which is even the high priestess as a number two in tarot, in the major arcana. But we don't want to be just that because the next level, remember, is the creatrix. She is the union of the magician, which is the masculine vessel, and the priestess, which is the feminine vessel. So the alchemist, the magician, and the priestess, which together create a combination of this union, and you do that as the inner masculine and feminine, and you, it cre it's created as a creatrix which is the next, which is the Empress card. And that is the complete rejoicement of life in the physical, the heaven on earth, the birthing of this, what we, we are in a way bringing forth as divine creations, not miscreations of ego, but those beautiful, rich, potent with life creations in the human plane. It's not always the easiest of tasks. No one said it will be. I also want to show you the bottom, uh, the behind, sorry, of these cards like this. It's the Yoni. The kini, um, the womb of life, also the prism of life, whatever way you see it. Again, this is called the Divine Feminine Oracle. It's not mine, so <laughs> not advertising it, but just showcasing it. And I hope you enjoyed this transmission, that you will find a space to reconnect, do this inner work. And my August is very inward based. Um, every day I do something to build up my intention because when I build on it, whatever I do, whatever I draw it, whatever I write it down, whatever I dance it out, it, it aligns, it puts the codes into the, the whole of my being and into the wholeness of all. And it brings more and more of that. It, it translates the liquid light quotient through that pillar which we have been birthing because we have raised that, risen that column and now the descension light is coming through. Okay, so remember again, ascension, descension, always one. If you want to know more and you're just the beginner, there's mastery courses that will take you on this whole journey of ascension. But it ends with the last course, which is cosmic ascension and union. Those of you who feel ready and call, take the next step. I invite you. And in some way, if you feel oh, that's not yet for me, there's also a multidimensional ascension course that also kind of responds to that. And I, on my first front homepage, I have a PDF file with all the courses. You just download that and click so they're all kind of take you to the web page where they're located because they're all in different parts <laughs> in different segments so thank you for being a part of this transmission i wish you a holy which means beautiful whole month and um, never consider yourself as non-whole or not healed because there's patterns or reflections coming through that are part of what we're doing as a collective just embrace it and invite the presence of love in which is not need to segment it or compartmentalize it or put it in a box. And if you still feel the need to, you know, pull those bubbles up, do it. It's not wrong. 
and then one day eventually you will see them just like dissolving it you're gonna in your inner eye you will see it like that it was like where's the bubble what have i done i didn't even pull it up yet oh the presence of divine love simply remembered it it is the source of it and it has what you've put in the bubble has remembered its source so it just became a part of that source which is all permeating that's how simple it is and as humans we don't always recognize that but when we do those inner attunements it works magic every single time the healing is almost instant so i invite you into that space I invite, you, I invite you to making this month as beautiful and joyful as you can. Joy is unconditional, but yet we also require human happiness. We're building the conditions to make life here rich and beautiful that reflects that inner unconditional state of joy. So let's do that. We're doing it. And so much love is meant power as always. Mwah. I love you so much. Take care. And if you want to support my work, you can find all the links down below. It helps. Muchos, muchos, much. And uh, take care. Jacob.